You're watching another episode of Kelly's Outdoor Adventures, the RV Drifters. This is our Alaska 2024 series, and this is episode number six. We are Mike and Debbie. We're easing into retirement, one RV adventure at a time. Our plan is to visit all 50 states. We've checked off about half of them so far. We travel willy-nilly style, and by that I mean in our F-250 truck we call Willy and our RV sports truck travel trailer we call Nilly. But this summer is dedicated to Alaska and our Alaska 2024 series. In last week's episode, we've made it to the Banff National Park. But let's back up just a little bit and take us from Calgary out because the drive was beautiful. So we're going to begin this video down in Calgary. I wonder if this is a sign of things to come. Windshield repair drive up tent. Just arriving at the Royal Canadian Superstore to get some provisions. We were in and out pretty quick, but with 150 less dollars in our pocket. I just started the truck and started to move. This guy in the red car pulls up, gets out, and walks away. All you RVers out there know what I'm talking about. We just passed the Olympic Park. Hopefully I can get it when we come up out of this. Quarter of a mile, keep left towards Highway One West. Man, what does that say? Okay, the next time around, we're going to spend more time in Calgary. This is our view of the Canadian Rockies as we're heading west towards Banff National Park, and we're on Highway One, the Trans Canadian Highway. begins the ooh and ah. Sweet. Oops. 
Banff is in that category with Aspen, Vail, Breckenridge. Pretty cool. <laughs> he gave you a thumbs up. Tunnel Mountain Campground. Coming into Tunnel Mountain Village Two Campground. Good view straight ahead. Hello, Bonjour. Hello. Thank you. Do you guys have a bug pass already? Yes. Yeah. My colleague already explained all the rules to you? Yes. Okay. Will we follow them? Yes. Okay. <laughs> Did he give you a map already? Yes. Okay. Right, you're in B26, okay. which is just up here to your left. Follow it around. Okay, we are in. We're in. There's the dump stations for the way out. They look like, good. Yeah, they do. do. Hmm. So you can just take the bus downtown, apparently? Yep. And it's free. Yeah, it's free. Oh crap. These are small. And it's already not. Okay. B26. This is us. Yep, this is us. Kind of nice. We can be. Yeah, it is. And because that dude behind us has got a van, I can wiggle and giggle a little bit. And, uh, you need me to get out? No, I think it's As soon as we got in and got set up, it was dinner time, and so I got the Blackstone set up and cooking pork chops. Okay, so let's back up here just a minute. Here's our site. Starlink's working perfectly. And we are kind of in a valley here, completely surrounded. There's mountains on that side, snow-capped mountains there. And after dinner, we got everything cleaned up, got the e-bikes out, and took off on a bike ride. Pretty awesome. I think, I don't know if you can see those or not, but there's a couple of female elk. I, is that an elk? Yeah, 
Okay. I think, let's see where those people are sitting if that doesn't tell you where to go. Debbie was on a mission. She found a park and a pull-off with some hoodoos, and it was just down the street from our campground, so we rode to there. Wow, is that gorgeous. Is this beautiful or what? Huh? Is this beautiful or what? <laughs> wow! I tried to film it and I couldn't off the wrong side. Okay. okay, hang on. I think... <laughs> this way, through the hoodies. Okay, there has to be a moose down there somewhere. Pretty cool. I like it. In 2011, the Canadian National Park System came up with the idea to place 18 sets of Adirondack chairs in lesser known areas, but still stunning locations. Today, that has grown to over 100 locations throughout the Canadian Park System. The red Adirondack chairs are placed in peaceful, breathtaking locations. And those are the famous red chairs. When we got back to the campground, we decided to take a ride throughout the campground. It's a pretty good size, 250 maybe RV sites, um, and it is definitely big rig friendly. I think we see another elk. Pretty cool. There's two of them over there now. Just moseying through the camp now. They said to stay away from them because it's mating season and uh, the males can get pretty rough. And as I come around the 
RV I found a couple of squirrels. So on day two, we hit the road. We went up to Lake Louise. The drive up the uh, parkway was awesome. All right, so we made it here to Lake Louise to the parking. Check one. Let's go see the lake. Wow, early in the morning and it's very crowded. Yeah, that's me checking out how cold the water was. I don't know if you can tell or not, but you can see the clouds up in the sky and the shadow on the snow up there. That looks so cool. Slowly moving. We had an opportunity, there was a break in the uh, crowds of people. We found a really good spot to take a selfie, so we did. This is Victoria Glacier. And let's zoom up. I don't know, if, hopefully Debbie's camera can zoom in on this better than this GoPro. But uh, you can kind of see the remnants of the glacier up through there. That might be cool to stay there sometime. <laughs> well, it looks like they're adding on. Going into bear country. Lake Louise is grizzly bear country. Yeah, you got that silt. See the silt on. It looks a lot more blue now that the sun's come out. <clears throat> it's actually pretty sweet. Alright, so we made it to Lake Louise and it is blue. Seems like the further up in this valley you go, the greener or the bluer the water gets. Pretty cool. I don't know if that uh, camera can pick up the reflection, but even with the ice, you can still kind of see the, uh, how clear the water is and uh, how still it is. And while we were in Lake Louise, we made a quick stop at their visitor center and uh, checked out other things to do in the area. This little critter here uh, fascinated me. Yeah, it's a, it looks like a squirrel, but its tail lays down. What do you call that? He's eating all their uh, flowers. Oh yeah, and this is where we read up on the red chair in the National Parks thing. We're on Bow Valley Parkway in Banff National Park. And we're going under something. Oh, the Bow Valley Parkway. Start. Welcome.
O Valley Parkway runs parallel with the uh, Highway 1 in Canada, and it's a more scenic drive to get back from Lake Louise back to Banff. Just more of uh, o, o Valley Parkway. Yeah, it's just a The Bow Valley Parkway has a lot of uh, scenic pull-offs with some uh, information kiosks. 9,548 feet. Where do you see that? That's the meters and that's the feet. So, Mount Ball. Bell. Bell. Ball. Oh, this one's Bell. Bell. Oh. <laughs> it's a Mount Bell and a Mount Ball. <laughs> 10,800 feet. This road is not as fast or crowded as Highway 1. It was a perfect for our purposes, and because we travel willy-nilly style, the stopouts along the way uh, just made it fun. Debbie packed us a picnic lunch, and this was the perfect spot for it. And if you haven't already subscribed to our channel, we'd appreciate it. It is free. Hit that like button and the notification bell and you will be notified of all of our adventures. And if you leave a comment, we will get back with you. Thanks for watching. I wonder if that's the Amtrak that goes down along through there. Well, we just had lunch and didn't see a bear. What's this creek or river called? Bow. Bow River. That is the Bow River running through the Banff National Forest. Uh, this was a good place to have a lunch. Very fun. Very scenic. And I think we're going to wrap this video up right here. In our next video, we stop at the Johnson Canyon Trail. We get to see our first bear in the wild. And we'll spend a day in downtown Banff. Okay, so we're going to go to the Johnson Canyon Lower Falls. Times don't fly too high. Be sure to keep the ground in sight. And as always, we hope to see you on the road. But if we don't, we'll see you right here next week. As always, and until next time, cheers, everybody. <laughs>